Okay, good evening, Livonia. We will start tonight's regular meeting with the reciting of the Pledge of Allegiance offered by Mr. Donovic. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Donovic. Welcome, everyone. In Excuse me. Welcome, everyone, to the 1,943rd regular meeting of the Livonia City Council. This is a voting meeting, and the meeting minutes of this meeting will be approved on the Monday, May 2nd, regular meeting agenda. Ms. Nash, will you take the roll, please? Council Member Donovic? Here. Council Member Morgan? Here. Council Member McCullough? Here. Vice President Toy? Here. Council Member Barr? Here. President Jolly? Present. So we will uh, we'll note that the only member of the council who's not here tonight is Ms. McIntyre. She's unfortunately uh, held up with some professional obligations and uh, sends her best. Uh, can I have a motion for the April 4th meeting minutes? That's the 1,942nd regular meeting of the so city moved. council. Support. Motion to approve by Toy, support by Donovic. Anybody have anything to say, to comment on the council? Any public comment on the meeting minutes? I see none for either. Ms. Nash, can you take the vote on that? Council Member Donovic? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member McCullough? Aye. Vice President Toy? Aye. Council Member Barr? Aye. President Jolly? Aye. The meeting minutes pass from April 4th. We'll go to the council. Does anybody in the council, oh, excuse me, actually, we don't have any special recognitions or anything at this time. Um, so we'll go to audience communication. We have Mr. Baringhouse here from the Greenleaf Commission. Mr. Baringhouse, good evening. Good evening. Thank you, President Jolly, and good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm here with uh, Greenleaf Commission me uh, members Betsy Calhoun and Mike Chesterkin as well. And I just wanted to take an opportunity to uh, inform you of an upcoming event that the Greenleaf Commission has. Uh, this Saturday, uh, April 23rd, uh, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., uh, the Greenleaf Commission, along with the Great Lakes Renewable Energy Association, mm -hmm. as well as Madonna University, will be hosting the, our first Renewable Energy and Sustainable Living Fair. And the purpose of this fair is to really begin educating the Livonia community on solar energy systems. Uh, we're going to have a uh, workshop conducted by the uh, Great Lakes Renewable Energy Association on solar power, mm -hmm. the benefits of solar power, and the process for uh, installing uh, residential solar power as well. In addition to that, and uh, this was really at a suggestion made by Council Member McCullough that the community should look at uh, having like a, a sustainable fair or a uh, sustainable housing fair. So we uh, looked deeper into that uh, suggestion and this was uh, one of the results of it. So in addition to the workshop that we'll have on solar energy, we we'll also have 11 <coughs> exhibitors there that uh, offer not only sustainable services, but sustainable goods as well. So it'll give the uh, Livonia residents an opportunity to learn about these services and make an even greater uh, impact on the environment. Uh, some of the exhibitors that we'll have there will be DTE Energy, Friends of the Rouge, GFL. We'll have Greener Method Cleaning uh, present at the event as well, Midtown Composting, which deals in household food composting as well. MI Rain Barrel, uh, we'll have the Livonia Building Inspection Department there to answer any questions regarding solar energy uh, ordinances and permitting, things like that. The Livonia Civic Center Library will be present to introduce their new seed library, uh, as well as the Greenleaf Commission will, will be there. And we'll have a local uh, solar installer, Spark Building and Energy, available as an exhibitor at the event as well. So again, this Saturday, 10 a.m. Madonna University. Uh, hope you can all drop by and uh, learn about solar energy. Thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you for the efforts uh, of the Greenleaf Commission in total. It's well appreciated by our community. Does anybody else want to address the council during audience communication? I see none, so audience communication will be closed at this time. We'll go to council announcements. Anybody from the council like to make an announcement at this time? No. Mr. McCullough. Thank you, President Jolly. Uh, Greenleaf, thank you so much. Honestly, I know we met, it felt like many months ago, I think it was. Um, I've been seeing it on social media. I plan on blasting it myself. It looks like a, 
you know, and this is going to be our first, correct? Yes, correct. And so, um, honestly, if, if you have people in the community that are out there that just even want to learn, um, no experience is necessary. There's a lot to learn. It's almost a sponge mode to come out and see all the cool things that can not only save energy but help uh, reduce our carbon footprint. So, uh, awesome job and looking forward to seeing you guys this Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the council? I'll take a moment for a personal announcement. I'd like to wish my daughter Claire a happy ninth birthday. Claire is uh, probably the best dancer in Livonia, <laughs> from, from, from my perspective anyways. Um, we're very proud of you, Claire, and uh, you make us proud every day. Claire is still, we ask her every year what she wants to be for, you know, when she grows up, and every year it's a baby doctor. This has uh, been a consistent theme, so we're, we're hoping that works out so she doesn't have to be a lawyer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so at this point in time, uh, I will welcome our department heads who are up here with us to help this evening. We have Todd Zelinsic, our city engineer, Paul Bernier, our city attorney, Ms. Nash, our city clerk. We have um, Mr. Mark Taramina, our city economic development director and planner, Ms. Sarah Kasparitz, our city council office uh, manager, keeper, director, boss. Okay. Um, and we also have some city department heads uh, out there as well. We have Jacob Rushlow from DPW. Um, so at this time, we will go to the agenda for this evening. We have a relatively short agenda for the regular meeting, but if you want more, you can stick around for the study meeting, and uh, that might take all night. Um, so first here, we have uh, reports from the mayor and other city officials. We have a communication from the Department of Finance dated March 23rd of 2022 forwarding various financial statements from the City of Livonia for the month ending in December 31, 2021. We also have a communication from the Department of Finance dated March 29th, 2022, forwarding various financial statements to the City of Livonia for the month ending in January 31, 2022. Those are both just re receiving files. At this time, we will go to the scheduled agenda for this meeting. First up is the consent agenda. This is items one through four. These items were previously studied at the study meeting on April 4th and found to require no additional study uh, when, and were placed on the consent agenda to be voted on at one time. This does not mean that they are any less important, um, but rather that they require no additional study. Can I have a motion for the consent agenda? Move approval. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Barr, support by Mr. McCullough. Anybody from the audience like to address this matter? The consent agenda, I see none. Ms. Nash, can you take the vote, please? Council Member Donovic? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member McCullough? Aye. Vice President Toy? Aye. Council Member Barr? Aye. President Jolly? Aye. The consent agenda passes. We will move on to the unfinished business portion of the agenda. Item number five is a roll call. A proposed amendment to the Livonia Vision 21 zoning ordinance as amended from the Department of Law. Petition 2022-01-06-01 submitted by the City of Livonia Planning Commission as amended to consider multiple revisions to the Livonia Vision 21 zoning ordinance in order to correct certain defects, add and delete provisions, and provide clarification to others. A first reading was given by this uh, council by Councilman McCullough on April 4th of 2022. Can I get a second reading? I'll offer in a second reading. Second reading has been offered by Mr. McCullough. Does anybody on the council have any announcements? No? Comments? No? Any audience communication in regards to item number five? I see none. Ms. Nash, can you take the vote, please? Council Member Donovic? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member McCullough? Aye. Vice President Toy? Aye. Council Member Barr? Aye. President Jolly? Aye. Item five passes. Item number six, the council has received an administrative response to council resolution 37-20. Uh, that's from the Office of Government Affairs regarding local government response to climate change. I'll note that we received a letter from the city administration detailing some of the efforts in regards to the items that were made, um, you know, items well, some of the efforts of the City Council in regards to climate change. So at this time, that requires no vote by the Council to receive that matter. Um, does the Council have any wish to make any other motions at this time regarding that? Mr. Sure. Mr. McCullough? Thank you, Council President. Um, 
I'd like to offer or make a resolution for a report and recommendation from administration. Um, I'm going to keep it very high level to refer any report recommendation on green building and or sustainable ordinances and or policies that may be out there that we can incorporate into uh, our city of Livonia going forward. Um, there's a, through the Michigan Municipality League. Mr. McCullough, you need a second for that motion. Sorry. For Thank you. We have a motion by Mr. McCullough. We have support from Ms. Toy. Mr. McCullough, would you like to explain your motion? Yes, thank you. Um, the Michigan Municipality League has a, a challenge that goes through. Uh, it's a statewide challenge through, a challenge through basically cities and townships. And it's a measure on how sustainable uh, through green metrics. And some of the uh, items, I know Livonia, we've done that in the past. I think we've hit silver. Uh, when I was in Novi, we did that, and then obviously my present uh, job at Northville Township, we're doing the same. Um, what it kind of equates to, and again, the report and recommendation is for the green building and sustainable ordinance and or policy, but some of the items that are listed into this checklist, and I won't go into too many, but one of them could be adopting policies that require, require EV infrastructure and EV ready infrastructure in any new private development or significant redevelopment in the city. Uh, another is create incentives and or provide educational resources for existing commercial property owners to add EV infrastructure to existing parking facilities. Um, another one is adopt policies and or ordinances that support renewable energy projects on private property. Examples are solar, wind, renewable energy overlay zones and expedited permitting. And the last one that popped up is an adopt a policy and or ordinance that encourages or incentivize uh, green infrastructure and low impact design in private development and construction projects. These are just items that are listed that certain communities that achieve gold status do on a daily basis. And I think obviously Livonia is a pretty much a built out community, but we can do our best to redevelop in a sustainable and lower our ca carbon footprint. Um, I do think that uh, reading the administrative response was just kind of the tip of the iceberg. I think we're checking some boxes, but I think we could do a lot more. And what I'm asking for is more of policy uh, slash an ordinance that we can enact. Um, and obviously maybe even partner with Greenleaf on this. Um, we also could pair this with the current tree uh, ordinance that is in the works and going slowly, but still in the works. So um, appreciate the second and uh, that's the message behind it. Thank you. Mr. Donovic. Thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate Mr. McCullough's uh, words and sentiment on this. Uh, I do support um, the encouragement of using sustainable products and working with private and, and public partnerships to make sure that we are good stewards of our environment and, and doing what we can to leave a clean footprint in our country. However, I am not okay with requiring private businesses to adapt policies. Uh, it's okay to encourage private businesses to adapt renewable projects or policies in, in green, uh, but at the same time, uh, I think we have to be careful as a local body of government to require uh, such levels that could be very uh, rigorous and, and, and maybe just financially not possible for our businesses. But I like the idea of encouraging businesses and working within their budget. A lot of small businesses in our community cannot afford EV par charging stations in the cost of tens, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, et cetera. But I do love the idea, and I hope that we can move forward as a community doing renewable sources of energy and, and working to uh, improve our environment. Thank you, Mr. President. Ms. Toy. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I agree with what my uh, last colleague was also saying. Um, I know in in our small business. We had people recycle even their vases, bring them to us so that kept that out of the, you know, the landfills and things like that. And we refocus those uh, for folks. And that was a very successful program. So if you ever need a vase, I have plenty of them. Um, and I, I just wanted to add to the sustainability committee. They've, they've done a superior job for this community. And uh, this started way back when, Cripe, when I was in high school, and we did an environmental center and buried the combustible engine over there where Nia Hazel Park is, believe it or not. But um, no, I don't remember when Lincoln was shot. But I'm just, I just wanted to focus you in that the environmental stuff has been around, and, and Councilman Kritzman at the time really put a shot in the arm on the sustainability and gave it new breath again. 
And these folks have worked long and hard, have never asked for a raise, and um, I'm, I'm just very proud of them all on that committee. I was able to attend a couple of their meetings, and they were able to attend a few of our meetings with um, Councilman McCullough and Councilman, um, let's see, what's your name again? Donovan. Uh, I'm teasing you. But anyhow, um, and they enlightened us into so many things where the idea popped up from, as was alluded to tonight, by Councilman McCullough to have this virtual event. So I applaud you on that. And, um, and that will open a lot of people's eyes to what is going on. And even the recycling piece that we looked at the carts, many people have asked us about the recycling and how we're gonna further promote reuse, reusing. And you can't turn on a TV program today without seeing something in regards to reusing and refocusing because a lot of these young people now, uh, a lot younger than me, by the way, um, uh, have learned um, in school how to reuse and recycle. And I think that fits in with your tree stuff, Brett, and, and others as well, that we begin to look at that as a community. And I know that we were always very conscious of that. So thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to applaud them and the committee and everybody else in Livonia that's doing their part. Thank you, Ms. Toy. Yes, sir. And I'm not running for anything. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, thank you, Ms. Toy. Uh, <laughs> uh, seeing no additional comments from the council, <laughs> sir, you're at the podium. Please state your name and address for the record. I'll, I'll tell you, you got two minutes to speak in regards to this motion. My name is Brent Sabo. I live at 14587 Blue Sky Street. Uh, good evening. Tonight I'll be sharing a letter that I wrote in response to the administration's uh, response to climate change issues. Dear Mayor Brosnan and Ms. Thomas, thank you for taking the time to summarize the many actions Livonia is taking in response to climate change issues. I am pleased that the administration is committed to decreasing Livonia's carbon footprint. Unfortunately, Livonia's residents are experiencing the effects of climate change already, and so what can we do to cope with it? The best means forward for Livonia in a climate change world is an abundant tree canopy. Climate change is causing more extreme weather events like heavy rainstorms and record high temperatures. Mature trees intercept large volumes of storm water runoff, reducing flood damage and the impact on the Rouge River watershed. Trees lower both surface and air temperatures by providing shade and through transpiration thus reducing heat-related health risks and lowering energy usage. The Environmental Protection Agency reports that shaded areas can be up to 20 to 45 degrees cooler than areas lacking shade. In Livonia, we need to stop depleting our tree canopy for unnecessary reasons. We need to stop removing healthy, mature city right-of-way trees for road repairs. We need to start replenishing Livonia's tree canopy by replanting all right-of-ways where trees have previously been removed for road repairs. Finally, we need to change the unsustainable road repair program, especially as taxpayers are soon being asked to fund another 10 years of the road millage. Annually, for the past nearly 20 years, the road repair program has cut down large quantities of healthy, mature right-of-way trees. In 2021 alone, over 100 healthy, mature trees were destroyed for road repair projects. The right-of-ways where trees have been removed are not necessarily replanted later, since the city allows homeowners to opt out of the replacement tree. A city tree Thank you, Mr. Sabo. You've reached your two minutes. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I'd like to request an additional minute and 30 seconds, please. Mr. President. Mr. Donovic. I'd like to offer... Uh, Improving to give the uh, resident a minute and 30 seconds additional time. Support. Okay, is there any objection from the council? Okay, you have an additional minute and 30 seconds. Thank you. A city tree inventory conducted by the Davy Tree Company in the year 2000 for Livonia counted 6,913 right-of-way sites missing a tree. Today, according to the city, there are approximately 8,500 right-of-way sites missing a tree. We have more vacant right-of-way sites today than there were before the road repair program began. Furthermore, right-of-ways where large-sized species trees are removed 
are often replanted with small or medium-sized species trees, which do not contribute as significantly to the overall canopy. While residents of Livonia can be proud that their city is taking action to reduce its carbon footprint, we are already experiencing the effects of climate change. The road repair program has been a detriment to Livonia's tree canopy and therefore a failure for climate change preparedness. As we are living with a climate crisis, we need now more than ever an abundant tree canopy throughout the city. I am requesting the administration to put a stop to the removal of healthy, mature trees and begin the process of replanting all vacant right-of-ways. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. If there is no additional audience communication in regards to this item, Ms. Nash, will you take the vote in regards to Mr. McCullough's motion? Council Member Donovic? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Uh, I would like to uh, clarify what exactly we're voting on. Are we voting on uh, Councilman McCullough's motion or are we voting on uh, Councilman Donovic's? The extension of time? No, no, not the extension of time on as far as what exactly. Are we voting on what he we has recommended? We only have one motion on the table. McCullough's. McCullough's motion is the only motion on the table. Okay. He's asking the city administration to dive deeper in regards to the certain items that he mentioned. Okay. Uh, nay. Council Member McCullough? Aye. Vice President Choi? Aye. Council Member Barr? Aye. President Jolly? Aye. The motion carries. That request will be sent to the city administration. Item number seven is a request to approve an amendment to amend the contract with Simple Green Recycling from the Department of Public Works, specifically to modify the program from collecting weekly regular curbside to scheduled pickup for residents. Can I have a motion on that? All for approving. Support. Approving from McCullough, support from Toy. Anyone on the council would like to address this matter? I see none. Any audience communication in regards to this matter? I see none. Ms. Nash, can you take the vote, please? Council Member Donovic? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member McCullough? Aye. Vice President Toy? Aye. Council Member Barr? Aye. President Jolly? No. The m motion passes. Uh, we'll move on to item number eight. Request to schedule a closed committee of the whole meeting coming to us from the Department of Law for the purpose of discussing pending litigation and attorney-client privileged communications with respect to the PARS Group, Inc. et al. v. City of Livonia. Can I have a motion in regards to this? So moved, Mr. Chair. Support. M motion by Toy, support by Donovic. Any council communication? I see none. Any audience communication? I see none. Ms. Nash, please take the vote. Council Member Donovic? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member McCullough? Aye. Vice President Toy? Aye. Council Member Barr? Aye. President Jolly? Aye. The motion passes. That concludes our scheduled agenda for this evening. I will go back to council announcements. Anybody from the council have an announcement to make? I see none. Any audience communication? If you have communication you'd like to address with us, please come to the podium. If you are on the study agenda, that meeting will start at 8 o'clock. Hi there. I don't know if this has anything to do with the number seven, what I'm going to talk about. Well, sir, tell me your name well, and address, please. I'm Bob Clancic. I live on 17786 Country Club in Livonia. Okay. Okay, I do a lot of walking in Livonia. I've been a resident since 88. Actually, I was born and raised back in Detroit. But 1950 is my birthday, so we know what Livonia started. But... Um, I've been reading a couple things on uh, the Laverne, I mean, LeVan Curtis website about the city looking like a pig pen. And I have to agree with them. I do a lot of walking, and this trash, which is really caused by the recycle bins being open, and climate change with so many more windy days. The other day, I was going down six mile in the, in the Burton Hollow sub, 65 mile an hour winds, and that trash was just going right down six mile, right into Farmington, newspapers, all kinds of garbage. I walked past many waterway sheds, like where the credit union is for the Rouge River, and there's trash down in those things. It's unbelievable. Nobody's going to pick it up. 
We don't have enough people to clean the city. And I go by the freeway, the fence that's on the freeway in 96, just plastered with garbage. Where is it coming from? It's got to be coming from those recycle bins. I've seen a recycle guy come by my house on a windy day, pick up the bin. As soon as he's picking it up, the stuff is going that way. It's going under his truck. Does he make any attempt to pick it up? None. So it's all over. And then yesterday, that, that's why I'm here, because yesterday I was really ticked off because I got somebody's junk stuff. I live on the commons, so behind me is all open. I picked up somebody's garbage from the recycle bin on, on Curtis. It runs the other way into the commons, the commons is bags, all kinds of stuff blowing, and this stuff is blowing right into my shrubbery along my deck. You know, I'm picking up people's, people's stuff, and everybody in our neighborhood is fed up with it. And at the end of our street on Country Club, we have uh, Curtis, and that's the park right there, and that's just full of garbage. When the wind blows that way, right into the park. So I suggest maybe 75 bucks a person, buy the can, and over a year or two, get reimbursed because it's, if it's a 32-gallon can, we could put it up every other week. We don't have to put it up every week. Some of these people have a half a bin, 65-mile-an-hour wind sucks up every, garb, every milk carton out of the thing, every loose paper in it. It makes no sense. Get a 32-gallon can. My daughter in Northville has 64 because they got a three-car garage. They could put it in. Most people in Livonia, no garage, small garage. 32 acceptable and I think we could go to every other week save money pass the money back reimburse the people for buying the cans thank you sir. and we could clean up the city because there's no way it's going to get cleaned up the way it is right now mr. president yes mr. Donovan thank you mr. president I'd like to offer a report recommendation from the administration to explain who is responsible for cleaning up our major roadways within the city and also our major roadways and freeways along 96 and 275 uh, to the gentleman I, I too like many of my colleagues probably get emails and, and correspondence from residents mr. Uh, Donovic are you making a motion uh, yes I am thank you okay, mr. We president need support for the I'll support thank support you support from Donovic mr. president There's motion by Donovic support by McCullum go ahead thank you um, and, and residents have reached out complaining about the trash and I too have seen the trash along our freeways uh, up along the fence line and it is frustrating to see that um, and it is disheartening. I believe that that's the county responsibility and the city doesn't have that responsibility, but I'd like to know how we can maybe partner with the county or the state officials, or maybe there is a, some responsibility there from our DPW. I'm not sure, and I think a lot of residents would like to know that. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Barr. It's, it's so funny. This, first of all, thanks you to the res, thank you to the resident for coming out. It's funny this came up tonight because I, I keep a list of just items that come to mind that at the appropriate time to bring up. Sometimes I bring up right away. Sometimes they sit on that list for a while, but literally just in the last week, I included on there the um, the, the trash along the expressways in particular, uh, as Councilman Donovic referred to. And I appreciate his motion. I was just gonna ask tonight, but it's probably appropriate just to do it the way he's done it, because I think the, the people probably in the best position to answer that question aren't here. But um, I, one just one thought I'll share publicly that that went through my mind. You know, we have this Livonia Service Corps. I, I can understand the the liability and the safety concerns about people going and cleaning up along the freeways. But you know, to Mr. Dominic's point about some kind of partnership is is I have a feeling that if we were to organize an event with the appropriate safety precautions, even if it was temporarily, um, you know, on a rolling basis, shutting down a lane to provide the buffer, you could get residents out there to pick pick that up. I think it could be a community event. And I do think that even though it might not be the community's fault that all that collects out there, um, I'm a big believer in the broken window theory and you keep things clean and it discourages more trash from going there. As far as what the residents said about stuff in the neighborhoods, I mean, granted, 65 degree winds is, a, is a definitely an anomaly, but um, I, there's, there, there's no substitute for just residents taking personal responsibility um, for packing the recycle bin appropriately. Um, I mean, I, my kids hear the speech from me every week about make sure everything's below the lip of the bin so nothing blows out. And um, I, I just don't believe that from a residential perspective, there's anything we can do that would substitute for that. But along the expressways, I, I absolutely want to see some creative ideas for that because there's an issue out there. So thanks. Mr. Chair. Ms. Toy. Thank you so much. Um, the expressways, I believe, are under the jurisdiction of the state of Michigan. Um, I, I'm not sure what legalities fall in there, so perhaps the administration can dive into that a bit more. 
Um, our probation department within the 16th District Court has those lovely folks that have gotten, I don't know what it, what is the claims, Jim, I'm, I'm not remembering, uh, is it a civil or whatever? I believe they were sentenced to the work program. The work program, that's it. The work program, I know my dad was involved in that, not as a participant, but as a director of that, and um, many years ago. And I think they're still out there picking up trash week in and week out um, on Saturdays. And they do various other things in the community, which is a huge asset. So I think Councilman Barr's idea is a good one. Um, but we do have some ongoing things going on, probably not enough but uh, certainly there is some effort being put forward in that regard. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Any audience communication in regards to the motion? I see none. Ms. Nash, take the vote, please. Council Member Donovic? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member McCullough? Aye. Vice President Toy? Aye. Council Member Barr? Aye. President Jolly? Aye. The motion passes. We will look forward to that recommendation from the re recommendation and information from the administration. Any other audience communication? I see none. I will entertain a motion to close the meeting. So move. Support. support. Motion by Barr, support by Toy. No objections from the council. Ms. Nash, can you take the vote, please? Council Member Donovic? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member McCullough? Aye. Vice President Toy? Aye. Council Member Barr? Aye. Vice, uh, President Jolly? Aye. The meeting is adjourned. We will be back at 8 o'clock for the study agenda, and it's going to be a long one. So get some food and water and prepare.